Good morning, students. Welcome back to session 11 of Banach Spaces class. In this class, we are going to prove the open mapping theorem. Open mapping theorem, which is an integral part of uh, functional analysis syllabus. Okay, open mapping theorem. Open mapping theorem. Before going to prove open mapping theorem, let us uh, uh, take up some prerequisites. So suppose B and B dash are Banach spaces. B and B dash are Banach spaces, and suppose S of X R denotes the open ball with center at X and radius R in B, and S dash of X R denotes the open ball with center at, at radius R in B dash. Okay, and also S R denotes the open ball with center at origin and radius r in b and sr dash denotes the open ball with center at the origin and radius r in b dash now clearly we can see show that s of xr is equal to x plus sr means s of xr is x plus the open ball with center at the origin and sr is equal to r times s1 if you want to show this Say suppose y belongs to S of xr. Y belongs to S of xr happens if and only if the distance between y and x is less than r or norm of y minus x is less than r. This happens if and only if mod of z is less than r where z I will taken to be y minus x. This happens if and only if y is equal to what? If z is equal to y minus x, y is equal to x plus z such that mod z is less than r. This happens if and only if y belongs to where? x plus sr. Thus, y belongs to s of xr if and only if y belongs to x plus sr. Therefore, s of xr can be written as x plus sr. Okay. Similarly, sr can be written as set of all x such that norm of x is less than r. This is the definition SR. This is a open ball with center at origin and radius R. So this can be written as set of all X such that norm of X by R is less than 1 because R can be taken in the denominator because R is always radius means it is a positive quantity. So this is equal to set of all R times X such that norm of X is less than 1. Okay. So this is equal to R times set of all X such that norm of x is less than 1. What is this r times? So this is s1 r into s1. Therefore, we can say sr can be written as r times s1. Okay. Now let us take up the lemma which is the integral part of open mapping theorem. So in this lemma says if b and b dash are Banach spaces and if t is a continuous linear transformation from B onto B dash then the image of each open sphere centered around the origin in B contains an open sphere centered around the origin in B dash means if if you say S is a if you say S is a open sphere with center on the origin in B say SR is the open sphere with center around the origin in B, then the image of this contains a open sphere centered around the origin in B dash. This we have to show. So, if B and B dash are Banach spaces and if T is a continuous linear transformation from B onto B dash, then the image of each open sphere centered around the origin in B contains an open sphere centered around the origin in B dash. Okay? Say so for this, say let us look at this. Suppose SR and SR dash denotes the open spheres around the centered around the origin in with radius R in B and B dash respectively. Then you know that SR can be written as set of all x belongs to B such that norm of x is less than R and SR dash is set of all x belongs to B dash such that norm of x is less than r. Now, SR can be written as r times s1. This already you know it. 
therefore what will happen t of sr is t of r into s1 that is equal to r into t of s1 so you call this as number 1 therefore it is enough to show that t of s1 contains some sr dash because t of s1 is in b dash so to prove the theorem to prove this result so it is enough to show that t of s1 contains some sr dash okay for this so for each positive integer n consider the open spheres uh, sn in b for each positive integer n consider the open sphere sn in b then clearly we can show that b is the union of these open spheres summation n is equal to 1 to infinity sn now since t is on to t of b is what b dash therefore b dash is equal to t of b that is equal to t of union n is equal to 1 to infinity sn this can be written as n is equal to 1 to infinity t of sn that i will call it as 2 now b dash is of set since b dash is of second category because a very complete metric space is of second category since b dash is complete therefore it is of second category since b dash is of second category there exists some subset t of sm of b dash such that interior of t of interior of t of sm closure is not equal to empty because it is of second category means it cannot be written as a countable union of no weight and sets so then what will happen no weight and sets means so interior of t of sm closure is equal to empty so it cannot be written as countable union of no weight and sets means interior of t of sm closure is not equal to empty so you choose some point belongs to interior of t of sm closure then if y not belongs to interior of t of sm closure means what y not belongs to t of sn because interior of t of sm closure is a t of sm therefore y not belongs to t of sm now clearly the map if i define a map f from b to b dash b dash to b dash given by f of y is equal to y minus y naught is definitely a homeomorphism it is looking like the translation mapping definitely it is a 1 1 onto continuous and inverse is also continuous therefore it is a homeomorphism and also 0 is an interior point of t of sm closure minus y naught because we have shown that y naught belongs y is not is an interior point of t of sm closure therefore if we transform this to right hand side 0 belongs to interior of t of sm closure minus y naught so interior of y naught is y naught itself so what will happen so 0 belongs to interior of t of t of sm closure minus y naught so therefore 0 is an interior point of t of sm closure minus y naught next let y be any point of t of sm minus y naught if y belongs to t of sm minus y naught then definitely there exists some since t is onto there ex, there exists some x belongs to sm such that y can be written as t of x minus y naught but y naught belongs to t of sm implies y naught is equal to t of x naught for some x naught belongs to sm so therefore y is equal to t of x minus t of x naught so since t is linear this can be written as t of x minus x naught for elements x comma x naught belongs to sm now the elements x comma x naught belongs to sm implies what norm of x is less than m norm of x naught is also less than m therefore the norm of x minus x naught less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of x naught norm of x is less than m norm of x naught is also less than m so this is less than 2 times of m okay this implies norm of x minus x naught is less than 2 times of m means x minus x naught belongs to the open sphere s of 2m s of 2m this implies if this belongs to s of 2m then the image lies in t of s 2m that is t of x minus x naught belongs to t of s 2m but t of x minus x naught is what t of x minus x naught is y therefore y belongs to t of s 2m thus we have shown that we have taken y belongs to t of s m minus y naught and we have shown that that y belongs to t of s 2m therefore t of s m minus y naught is a subset of t of s m minus y naught is contained in t of s 2m t of s 2m can be written as 2 times 2m times t of s 1 2 times into t of s 1 this implies if you take a closure for this 
T of SM minus Y0 closure is definitely contained in 2 times into T of S1 closure. You call this as number 3. Now, since if we are taken to be homeomorphism, what will happen? F of T of SM closure is equal to F of T of SM whole closure because if F is a homeomorphism, you know from topology that F of A closure is equal to F of A whole closure. So, uh, this implies F of T of SM closure means what? T of SM closure minus Y0 by definition of F. This is contained in. So, uh, F of T of SM is what? T of SM minus Y0 for this whole closure. So, this is equal to what? T of SM minus Y0, T of SM minus Y0 closure is contained in 2M times T of S1 closure by 3. So, this is equal to 2M into T of S1 closure. So, 2M into T of S1 closure. So, you call this as number 4. Thus, it follows that 0 is an interior point of T of S1 closure because already 0 is an interior point of T of SM closure minus Y0. But this, since this is contained in T of S1 closure, therefore, 0 is an interior point of T of S1 closure. Then by definition what will happen? 0 is an interior point means every neighborhood of 0 is contained in T of S1 closure. So, there exists a neighborhood of 0 that is S epsilon dash is contained in T of S1 closure. I call it as phi. Now, let y belongs to S epsilon dash be arbitrary. Let y belongs to S epsilon dash be arbitrary. Then what will happen? Norm of y is less than epsilon because its radius is epsilon. So, by phi what will happen? y belongs to, if y belongs to S epsilon dash, then y belongs to T of S1 closure. Therefore, y belongs to T of S1 closure. y belongs to T of S1 closure means y becomes an adherent point of T of S1. Okay? y belongs to, y is an adherent point of T of S1 by definition of an uh, closure of a set. So, this implies y is an adherent point means what will happen? There exists some y1 in T of S1 such that y minus y1 is less than epsilon adherent point means the attaching point. So, means the distance will be very small. So, that is why we have taken y1 belongs to T of S1 such that norm of y minus y1 is less than epsilon by 2. But y1 belongs to T of S1 means since T is on to again there exists some x1 belongs to S1 such that T of x1 is y1 and norm of x1 means norm of x1 is less than 1 because x1 belongs to S1. So, again from 5, again from 5 what will happen? We can see that S, S epsilon by 2 dash is contained in what? T of S of closure because S epsilon according to 5, S epsilon dash is contained in T of S S, S1 closure. So, I take instead of epsilon, epsilon by 2. So, again by 5, S epsilon by 2 dash is contained in T of S of closure. And since norm of y minus y1 is less than epsilon by 2, definitely y minus y1 belongs to S epsilon by 2 dash, but in turn it is contained in T of S of closure. So, as before, Again, this implies what? Y minus Y1 belongs to T of S of uh, closure means y, y, y minus Y1 becomes an adherent point of T of S of closure. So, there exists as before, there exists some say the some vector say Y2 belongs to T of S of such that norm of Y minus Y1 is 1 point minus Y2 is less than epsilon by 2 square, epsilon by 2 square where Y2 is what? T of X2 x2 belongs to s s s x2 belongs to s2 therefore norm of x2 is uh, s of therefore norm of x2 is less than of so continuing this way what will happen we obtain a sequence xn of vectors in b xn of vectors in b such that norm of xn is less than norm of xn is less than 1 by 2 raised to n minus 1 and this one norm of y minus according to this y minus y1 plus y2. So, norm of y minus y1 plus y2 etc. yn is less than epsilon by 2 raised to n less than epsilon by 2 raised to n and yn is the image of t of xn. You call this as number 6. Now, let sn denotes the partial sum say sn is equal to x1, x2 etc. xn. 
then what will happen norm of xn norm of sn is norm of the above x1 plus x2 etc xn which are each one will less than or equal to norm of x1 plus norm of x2 etc norm of xn but this is less than 1 by 2 raised to 0 means 1 less than 1 plus 1 by 2 and so on total is 1 by 2 raised to n minus 1 but definitely this sum is definitely less than 2 you call this as number 7 also for n greater than m we have norm of sn minus sm is up to m terms we remove therefore norm of xm plus 1 plus xm plus 2 and so on xn so this is equal less than or equal to norm of xm plus 1 plus norm of xm plus 2 and so on norm of xn but each one is less than 1 by 2 raised to m plus 1 by 2 raised to m plus 1 and so on 1 by 2 raised to n minus 1 so this is equal to the sum you can find to be 1 by 2 raised to m minus 1 minus 1 by 2 raised to n minus 1 but this will be tends to 0 as m and n tending to infinity if m and n tend to, tending to infinity norm of sn minus sm tending to 0 means sn becomes a Cauchy sequence in B and B is complete means this Cauchy sequence can converges and since B is complete there exists a vector say x in B such that limit n tends to infinity sn is equal to x and so norm of x is what norm of limit of sn which is definitely less than norm of limit of sn is definitely because norm of sn is less than what 2 by 7 therefore def norm limit norm of limit of sn definitely less than 2 but 2 is less than 3 by 7 okay then what will happen this implies norm of x is less than 3 means x belongs to s3 okay now y1 plus y2 etc yn is equal to what t of x1 t of x2 etc t of x1 xn since t is continuous what will happen x is equal to limit of sn okay x is equal to limit of sn implies t of x is equal to what t of limit of sn that's equal to limit of t of sn limit of t of sn is what y1 y2 etc yn but this is equal to what this is nothing but y by 6 okay therefore y is equal to t of x y is equal to t of x where x belongs to s3 so that where x belongs to s3 means y belongs to t of x where x belongs to s3 implies what y belongs to t of s3 if x belongs to s3 where y belongs to y belongs to t of s3 thus we have taken y belongs to s epsilon dash okay means it's an open sphere with center at the origin in b dash and we have shown that y belongs to the image of the open sphere image of the open sphere s3 which is an open sphere in b thus image of the image of the open sphere in b dash is contained in the image of the open sphere in b that is s epsilon dash is contained in t of s3 this is the proof of the lemma now let us take up the uh, uh, important part of this uh, session that is the open mapping theorem the open mapping theorem says that if b and b dash are banach spaces and t is a continuous linear transformation of b onto b dash then t is an open mapping so the open mapping theorem is statement is very simple if b and b dash are banach spaces and if t is a continuous linear transformation of b onto b dash then t is an open mapping open mapping means the mapping which maps open sets onto open sets open sets onto open sets means the mapping which maps open set in b onto the open set in b dash we need to prove this for this what i do is i will take the open uh, subset uh, g is an open ball or open set in b g is an open set in b we have to show t of g is we show t of g is open subset of b dash t of g is open subset of b dash means when some subset is open if it is if every point of in it is a okay every point of point in it is a interior point means for every point in t of g there exists an open ball which is wholly contained in t of g that is the thing okay for this i will take y let y belongs to t of g be any arbitrary point okay 
then as t is onto what will happen y belongs to t of g means there exists x belongs to g such that t of x is equal to y now x belongs to g now x belongs to g and g is open now, x belongs to g is open means there exists an open ball around x which is only contained in g therefore there exists an open sphere or open ball s of x comma r which is contained in g but s of x xr is x plus sr which is contained in g but by the previous theorem what previous lemma says the image of open the image of the open sphere in b contains an uh, the image of the open sphere centered around the origin in b contains an open sphere centered around the origin in b dash therefore according to that theorem that lemma s yes, what will happen there exist an open sphere s epsilon dash in b dash center around the origin in b dash such that s epsilon dash is contained in t of sr because t of sr is a open ball with center at the origin and radius r in b okay so therefore what will happen if i add y to this y plus s epsilon dash is con definitely contained in y plus t of sr but y is what image of x that is t of x plus t of sr or since t is linear this can be written as t of x plus sr but this is contained in where t of x plus sr is contained in g means t of x plus sr is contained in t of g therefore this is contained in t of g therefore the left hand side can be written as s dash of y comma epsilon it's an open ball uh, with uh, center at y and radius epsilon okay means y is an arbitrary point y is an arbitrary point we have taken in t of g therefore we have a open ball contained in open ball containing y that is contained in t of g okay for the element y belongs to t of g for the element y belongs to t of g there exists an open ball s dash of y comma epsilon which is contained in t of g therefore by definition t of g is open now g is open and consequent now g is open we have assumed and we have shown that t of g is open therefore t becomes an open mapping so it's a simple proof but the lemma is an integral part of this theorem whenever say if they ask open mapping theorem in the examination so depending on the marks you need to take up so if they ask this question for more than 10 marks you definitely need to write the lemma okay if they ask it for only two, uh, three to four marks then you state the lemma and you proceed with this proof okay thank you